What if time isn't moving forward at all? What if every moment of your life, your past, your present, and your future, is already happening right now? Because, according to some of the greatest minds in science and philosophy, time might not be what we think it is. In today's video, we're exploring one of the strangest ideas ever proposed, that time might be an illusion. That maybe, consciousness doesn't move through time, maybe time moves through us. Let's start simple. What even is time? Before clocks and calendars, humans measured time through cycles, the sunrise and sunset, the phases of the moon, the changing seasons. Time was rhythmic, circular, a repeating dance of nature. But then came the mechanical clock, the gears, the ticking hands, and suddenly, time became linear, a constant line moving from past to present to future. And with a watch on our wrist, we began to feel owned by time. Science, too, once saw time as fixed. In the 1600s, Isaac Newton described it as a universal river, flowing steadily, the same for everyone, everywhere. But centuries later, Albert Einstein changed everything. Einstein showed us that time isn't absolute. It bends, it stretches, it slows. If you travel near the speed of light, time actually passes slower for you. This isn't science fiction, it's been proven. In 1971, two scientists flew atomic clocks around the world on airplanes. When the planes landed, the clocks on board were slightly behind the ones that stayed on Earth. It was a tiny difference, just billionths of a second. But it proved Einstein right. Time actually slows down the faster you move. This isn't a theory anymore. It's a measurable reality. That discovery led to one of Einstein's most mind-bending ideas, space-time. Think of space and time not as two separate things, but as threads woven together into a single cosmic fabric. When something massive, like a planet or a star, sits on that fabric, it bends it, kind of like putting a bowling ball on a trampoline. And that bending doesn't just create gravity, it also slows down time itself. If you've ever seen the movie Interstellar, you've already witnessed this idea in action. Remember the scene where the astronauts land on the planet near a black hole, and one hour there equals seven years back on Earth. That's time dilation, the extreme stretching of time near immense gravity. It's not just Hollywood imagination, it's real physics. Einstein once wrote to a friend, for us physicists, the distinction between past, present, and future is only a stubbornly persistent illusion. From that idea came the concept of the block universe, the view that every event, from the birth of stars to your next heartbeat, already exists in space-time. The past and future aren't gone or waiting, they're still there, layered like pages in a cosmic book. We just flip through them, one at a time, reading the story of reality, frame by frame. But relativity isn't the only thing questioning time. Quantum physics, the science of the very small, takes it even further. One experiment called the delayed choice quantum eraser found that a particle can somehow decide how it behaved in the past based on what happens in the future. That's right, future events seem to affect past outcomes. This led to theories like retrocausality, the idea that cause and effect might run both ways, and the Wheeler-DeWitt equation which describes the entire universe without using time at all. According to this view, the universe doesn't evolve through time. It just is. A static field of information, and consciousness is what gives it motion. Now, that's the scientific mystery. But how does this connect to how we actually experience time? That's where I want to bring in Geo. Geo from a more human perspective. What does all this mean for how we live, think, and feel? 
it means time might not be something outside of us, it might be something we create. Our brains don't experience reality directly, they predict it. Newer science shows that what we call the present moment is actually a reconstruction, a delayed image of the past, blended with a prediction of what's about to happen. We're always living about 80 milliseconds behind reality. By the time you hear my voice, your brain has already processed it, edited it, and placed it in sequence. That means the feeling of now is just the brain's best guess, a window about three seconds wide, called the specious present. Outside that window, the brain calls it past or future. So if time is our brain's way of stitching change into a story, maybe it's not a property of the universe at all. Maybe it's a property of consciousness. Mystics have been saying this for thousands of years. Buddhism, Hinduism, even Christian mysticism, they all describe the same truth. Only the present moment is real. In Sanskrit, there's the concept of Kalachakra, or the wheel of time an endless cycle of existence where every moment contains all others. And in Buddhism, enlightenment is awakening to what they call the eternal now. The realization that everything, everywhere, is happening at once. The 13th century Meister Eckhart said, there exists only the present in which all eternity lies. When meditators describe losing all sense of time, they're not escaping reality. They're touching something deeper, awareness without a cork. Maybe what physics calls the block universe, mystics call God. Today, scientists like Carlo Rovelli and Julian Barbour are trying to bridge that gap. Rovelli says, time is emergent. It arises only through interactions between particles, not as an independent force. He says, time doesn't exist at all, only countless nows, static snapshots of the universe. And then there's the question of the arrow of time. Why can we move through space in any direction, but only move through time in one? The answer might be entropy the universe's tendency toward disorder. A broken glass can't unbreak, smoke won't return to a candle, because energy spreads out, never the other way around. But at the microscopic level, the equations of physics don't care about direction. Forward or backward, they work the same. So maybe the arrow of time is not written into the laws of nature, but into our perception of change. When you see time as fixed and linear, life feels like a race, always moving toward or away from something. But if every moment already exists, there's nothing to chase. No need to fear the future or regret the past, because both are happening right now, just beyond your current frame of awareness. That doesn't mean you stop caring about goals or memories. It means you realize Every possible version of you already exists. The peaceful one, the fearful one, the fulfilled one. You're just tuning into which one you experience. So, what if we've had it backward all along? What if time isn't a river carrying us forward, but an ocean, already complete, where we're simply choosing which wave to ride? Every memory you recall, every dream of the future, might just be different coordinates in the same fast sea of existence. We call it past and future, but maybe those are just words our minds invented to describe the movement of awareness through an unmoving reality. And if that's true, then right now, somewhere in the fabric of space-time, another version of you is watching this same moment and wondering the same thing. Maybe time doesn't pass at all. Maybe we do, crossing through infinite stillness, mistaking motion for meaning. So tell me, if every version of your life already exists, which one will you choose to experience next?
Because perhaps the real secret isn't how to control time, but how to wake up inside it.